Lynn, thanks for joining us for another hour of Money Mind here on CNA 938. Now, on our show, we don't just talk about the theoretical, you know, things like business concepts and strategies, tips and how to build enduring brands and businesses. I mean, time from time to time, we do invite onto our program those who have walked the talk, braved the journey called entrepreneurship, and who have battle scars to show. They have grand plans, great ambitions, grit like no other, and whose stories are real and raw as they come. Now, in this next hour, we're excited to hear the story of one such person, his name, Nisa Nachan, co-founder and managing director of We The People and Talking Toes. Now, Talking Toes is an online retail platform selling socks, but not just any kind of socks, socks that bring positivity to people's souls through their souls. As for We The People, they're about, uh, they're a crowdfunded Kickstarter products. Oh, that's what they're all about. And they are the world's only omni-channel crowdfunding accelerator. Well, I don't know if you've been to their stores before the Circuit Breaker, but they have nifty gadgets and gizmos that are both functional and aesthetically pleasing. We The People was established in September 2016, but it was Talking Toes that took the first step in 2015. That's right. Talking Toes is purely uh, an online store, but We The People, they have both uh, uh, retail space, uh, brick and mortar types, as well as online. Now, for their brick and mortar stores, uh, they have two in Singapore, one at Millennial Walk, the other at Funan Mall, one also up in Kuala Lumpur at the Intermark Mall, and the newest store that most recently opened, that was in March only, and that was in Santa Clara in California. But of course, uh, we know that was uh, forced to shutter soon after because of restrictions imposed on businesses and residents over in California. Now, uh, Nissan will be sharing with us uh, the unexpected turn of events later on, and that had him packing his bags and jetting back to Singapore earlier than scheduled. But first, uh, Nissan, welcome to Money Mind. Thanks for making time to speak with us. Hey, guys. Thank hey. you so much. Now, you have founded two businesses about one year apart from each other. One in 2015, there was Talking Toes, and then 2016 was We The People. When did it occur to you, Nissan, that you wanted to have your own startups, you wanted to run your own business? I always had something for stock. It's something that I love since young. So uh, one day I decided to be crazy and, uh, you know, why not have my own brand of socks? So I <laughs> took the risk and did what I did. What is it about socks that, that intrigues you or excites you? I love the whole idea of it being loud and bright and, you know, it kind of cheers me up. So being in a formal environment where it's always intense and shit, but having colorful socks just kind of make me you know, <laughs> so happy. I think the fashion statement as well, so it really helps. Right. So how would you recommend that we wear socks? Well, I mean, because we, we knew we were going to be talking to you about talking toes for a little bit on our show, I asked yeah. um, uh, Willin, my co-host, and our producer, Su Sien, to bring and wear their most colourful, happy socks. And uh, uh, Su Sien's worn hers. Uh, it's pink and with zebra prints on it. <laughs> I'm wearing right. mine. We, Willin just is lifting up her socks uh, in her hands. She's not wearing them. She's holding her socks up in her hands. It's got a cat face. It's yellow, uh, yellow-headed with a brown body of socks. That's <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I asked her, why isn't, why isn't she wearing those socks? You know, and she says, oh, it's too bright. Doesn't go with what she's wearing. But <laughs> what, what's your strategy to how you pair up socks with what you wear? Are they supposed to stand out or blend in? They're supposed to stand out, you know, just go loud. I think people these days, even in a formal environment, they're very open to fashion. And it kind of has, you know, that personality and character just stands out in you when you have colorful socks, when you're wearing something formal. So just go for it. So far, I did try it in, uh, when I was still working. Mm. And everyone's like, oh, you have really colorful socks, but I like it. Okay, so Willin. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was cool. Willin, colorful socks. You're meant to have it stand out. Okay, sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, is that what the hallmark of Talking Toes is? Just bright, colourful socks? That, is that oh, what sets not, you apart? Uh, oh, we have something that's pretty unique. On every pair of socks, there is an inspirational message or quote at the forefoot. That's why it's called Talking Toes. It speaks to you in a different way. So we go by the mantra. We don't sell socks. We sell inspiration. Leave home on a good note with us. So yeah. that's the mission behind the brand. It's a concept. 
Yep, and I think we, we need we need a lot more positive thoughts and messages uh, speaking to us from our feet as well these days uh, with COVID-19. Now, let's talk about uh, how confident you were right from before talking toes, you know, uh, peaked through uh, the, those that sock business that you have. How confident were you that you were going to make it as a founder? Because a lot of, you know, startups do fold up very quickly. I think it's a risk that was worth uh, taking. Um, it goes, you know, if you don't try, you never know. I've always believed in that. And we have a model where we're not just selling socks, we're selling an experience. And through the experience, people probably buy that idea. And of course, with quality and with the type of colors that we have, along with the quotes, it was something that could be replicated very easily. And it took us some time, you know, when we started small, we were in a pop-up store, and then we went on to do distribution in retail, we are in the department stores as we go along. But as a startup brand, it's pretty tough at the same time because we're new, you know, who is this new player in the market? That's what everyone is going to ask. But at the same time, as time goes by, we prove it with the quality, with the concept. So uh, we just have to go on and try and then never look back. And would you say that this is a competitive space to be in? Socks? Uh, it is. So we just needed the right concept to stand out. That's why if we have the quotes there, you know, it kind of makes it a bit different. Socks are just socks, great quality with, uh, you know, functionality. But quotes, come home and, you know, sometimes you feel bad about having a not so good day at work. You feel tired. But when you remove your shoes, look at the quote, feel good about yourself and then step into home. It's vice versa when you leave home as well. Yeah, and I'm reading some of unique feature. I'm reading some of the messages on the socks that you have. Uh, some that read, all you need is love, be excited for today, it's going to be all right, trust the process. And I think uh, very encouraging statements to be making during these very difficult times as well. Yeah. Let's talk about some of your model founders, um, whom you may have spent a lot of time researching and reading up about uh, and emulating. Uh, who could some of them be and what makes you want to model after them? I've always looked up to Elon Musk. I think he's a character that everyone is very familiar about. He's someone who is very crazy in his ideas. Very crazy. In fact, he made the very news. Uh, he made the news just a while ago. Yeah, he's always making the news. So. <laughs> um, he's very controversial, but in a very positive way. But I like him since day one because he has the drive, he has the mental resilience, and he has the charisma and character to push through his ideas and influence people in the right way to work for his dreams. So that caught, my, that caught me because uh, I, I would love to be that someone who wants to do extra, who wants to do more, and try to inspire a team where we can have that kind of drive as a startup, and then we'll be successful in the near future, of course. And also, you know, uh, he's got that business uh, of wanting to take it to space as well. But let's leave it for another day. Um, yes. so, so 2015 was when Talking Toes uh, started. And then in September 2016, that was when you co-founded We The People. Um, I've had the pleasure of stepping into your store at the Millennial Walk um, prior to Circuit Breaker happening and all. Um, so give us, uh, our listeners especially who may not be familiar with We The People, the story behind that business idea. So we started um, because me and my partners, we all have our own brands that we launch on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And we found that with Kickstarter or with crowdfunding, there isn't really a trust that people have in products. So we decided, hey, you know what? Uh, there isn't a concept selling Kickstarter products or crowdfunded products in Singapore. So let's give this a shot. So we wanted to be the bridge where people could trust the brand that we curate. We wanted to be the bridge to creators or to startup brands where, hey, you know what? This is a space where startup brands thrive. Big brands are big brands, but at the same time, new brands are further amplified and glorified through our own channels because people want to see fresh ideas. People want to see something that's new. And with crowdfunding, there's so much to offer. Okay. So with retail, yeah, sorry. Sorry, no, no, please carry on. Yeah, with retail, uh, that was when we first started. And now we've moved on to become a crowdfunding accelerator for many brands. Uh, we create our own content. We have our own uh, YouTube channels where we develop videos. We do lots of marketing for live campaigns that are on Kickstarter. 
where we blast it out to our strong database across the four countries. So that's what we do now. We're more of like an agency consultation, consulting where we have retail. It's very omni-channel in uh, the type of work that we do. So basically, do you help to raise funds for some of these exciting products that um, you know designers have come up with but haven't got the, the money to uh, get going on a, on a major scale? Yeah, that's uh, when they raise their funds on Kickstarter, you know, when they have a campaign, that's where we blast it out to our members. Um, we even have brands that we, um, we have a partner that's Korean. So we launched Singapore brands or even American brands in a Korean crowdfunding platform where there is a market that's untapped because of language. So we have helped them to raise funds. This has been going on for the last uh, maybe five to six months. And we have done maybe about eight to nine campaigns where they raise funds. And at the same time, we open a new market for them in a country where they can't speak the language. Mm. Yeah, well, that's wonderful to know that, you know, yes, uh, we often forget that there are all these language uh, barriers as well and, and access uh, entry into new markets. And this is where I guess we the people is able to break through with that. So in some sense, you also curate the quality of products that come through your doors, right? Um, you, you have to probably assess how um, feasible it is to go commercial or go mass production with uh, the items that are presented to you. What have been some um, more radically amazing products that We The People has proudly represented? Oh, I'm sure everyone knows this. Uh, we do have uh, the travel bagel. It's called the Mojik travel bagel. Uh, it's a round donut shaped travel adapter where you could attach multiple device charging at the same time mm. and it's also an uh, extension plug. We're yeah. so used to, say, with, to, to traveling with a large rectangular long extension plug but with this it fits into the middle of your palm. It's an extension and you can connect many devices at the same time. So that has been one of our major stars since we started about maybe three and a half years ago. Okay. And right now we have uh, of course a UV sterilizer that's been very popular that's related to the whole COVID issue. So people are very sensitive about hygiene, they want to be clean and you want something that's portable. So um, yeah, this product has been great. In the last uh, two weeks, I think we sold more than 400 units. Wow, okay. And something that's portable where you just shine. But we have the certifications that it's legit. It has passed all international tests and it's great for you so it's the best one in the market so far i think you just got a lot of listeners excited with this uv oh. thing that can kill viruses how does it work oh so it's a uv light it yeah. uses uv light that kills uh, bacteria within uh, maybe 10 to 15 seconds so mm -hmm. you just have to shine it across a surface or just leave it there there's actually a stand attached to it but of course because it's uv it has to be used in a safe environment where you know, you don't shine it at someone in the eye or you don't play with it. You don't allow kids to, to play. But there are safety uh, precautions and safety uh, features in the product that does not allow, um, you know, people to be funny with it. Mm. So it's safe for usage as well. And do you know if it kills coronavirus? Oh, it doesn't. But uh, it has been tested in a lab in Korea where it kills a feline, uh, vi the, the feline coronavirus. So it's a very small percentage. But of course, it's more towards germs and bacteria where we are mostly concerned about right now. Yeah, I mean, just you know, basic general hygiene would be a good thing to yeah. have as well. Uh, we are hearing from uh, Lee Sun Chan, and he is the co-founder and MD of We The People and Talking Toes. We are talking about uh, his different businesses, including We The People, uh, of which recently opened up its fourth store in Silicon Valley in California. And that was your first US store. A huge milestone for your company, I suppose. Oh, yes, it was actually our second one. We had the first one in uh, San Luis, but then uh, it kind of closed down due to the whole COVID uh, issue. Ah. But with the one in Silicon Valley, oh, that represents a huge uh, opportunity for us when the mall contacted us. Um, two years ago, they came to us, but of course, with cash flow and, you know, being uncertain about what it's going to be like in a foreign country, then uh, we didn't go with it. But right now, they gave us a super opportunity in a new wing. We're the very focused on new tech and gadgets and ideas, so we were just honored to be there.
Mm. Well, in a while, we're going to be continuing our conversation with you, Neeson, but we've got to go for a news break. But when we come back, we're going to be finding out more about that store. It had a grand opening in March, and then all too soon, you had to bring those shutters down temporarily because of COVID-19. And it made you also fly back to Singapore earlier than you had planned to. So we'll continue with that story about your return journey from San Francisco to Singapore in uh, the next part after the news. Nissan Chan is speaking with us, co-founder and MD of We The People and Talking Toes. Right now, we've got roadworks on Upper Changi Road east towards the city after Expo Drive. Avoid the left lane. Also, men at work on the KJE towards the BKE after the PIE entrance. Avoid lane 3. LTA traffic keeps you moving. For your own safety, do not start to cross the road when the green man is flashing 12, at a pedestrian 30. crossing. As Singapore battles COVID as Singapore and the world tackles COVID-19, we all need accurate, easy to understand information. CNN 938 is here for you. Now, every weekday at 5 p.m., join us for the COVID QA. The answers to your questions from the experts. Plus, the latest coronavirus news. Send us your questions every day. Email us at cna938 at mediacorp.com.sg. WhatsApp us at 9631938. Message us on our CNA 938 Facebook page. Or call us during the program on 9938. The COVID Q&A, weekdays at 5pm with Lance, Mel and Daniel on CNA 938. This is CNA 938. Understand Asia. Good afternoon, it's 12.30 with Chu Lin. I'm Stanley Leong. Hong Kong Chief Executive Kerry Lam says the government is looking at enhancing the city's employee support scheme. The program is a pillar policy initiative by Mrs Lam's government to prevent job losses in Hong Kong. A Hong Kong Chief uh, Correspondent Roland Lim with the details. She's ready to announce uh, the first phase of uh, the government spending some $10 billion uh, in the employment support scheme to subsidise employers to pay for their salaries. Uh, the first phase of the application will start on the 25th of this month. Uh, the application period is three weeks, and the government says that disbursements from the government would be between three to four weeks from the time of application by the employers. Now, the first phase uh, will subsidize... the people and Talking Toes. Now, Talking Toes is an online retail platform of colourful socks meant to brighten your day. Something that we can't have enough of these days, huh? As for We The People, they are about crowdfunded Kickstarter products and are the world's only omni-channel crowdfunding accelerator. And aside from their two stores here in Singapore at Millennia Walk and Funan Mall and one in KL, We The People opened their first store in the US state of California recently in March. Unfortunately, it was forced to shutter soon after due to restrictions imposed on businesses and residents in California due to COVID-19. And that meant Neeson had to get himself out of the US earlier than expected before travel restrictions would make it difficult to get back. Now, Neeson, tell us what was it like for you back then? I mean, your shop had just opened and then suddenly there was this urgency to make snap decisions as COVID-19 started to bear down on businesses and the community in Silicon Valley. It was a really horrible situation. I would say very epic as well. We were there and open for five days. Sales was great. People were coming. There was a big crowd every hour, every day. And then uh, the whole COVID thing got very serious in uh, Silicon Valley. We were in the worst hit zone in the whole of California. So uh, the malls announced the lockdown just one day. And then the next day we had to close. Yeah. There was crazy <laughs> i mean were you really like you know shaking your head in, with this belief when you heard that this shop had to close after five days or did you consider yourself you know like that's how we would call it sway um at first it was you know we felt that way but that was just for maybe a good one hour but we were kind of laughing and like i like, can't believe this actually happened this is totally epic it was supposed to be like the biggest year for us you know with that opening but, um, you know, in just two days, and we needed to fly back. Mm. So, so it was kind of sweet in a way you can call it. But at the same time, uh, you know, we just have to do it. Because we have no healthcare benefits there, and uh, we have to be safe. So where we are now in Singapore, we have everything that's provided. So I guess uh, it was the right choice. 
So what's the situation in the US for your US store right now? You have you uh, got your lease all paid up or, or are you what are your plans? We were pretty fortunate because the, the malls were very understanding there. I think this is something that uh, they kind of lead the way in terms of having to manage tenants. Mm. And they were very quick, no rental that you needed to pay, you know, and they were in very close communication with us every single week that this is happening. The opening will be delayed. So every week we receive an email or sometimes we even get on the call with uh, the leasing staff. Right. And that was really just great responsibility and accountability even if we were just like a typical startup country from or typical uh, you know company from another country and i've spoken to the other vendors as well and they're all the same and consistent towards everyone so that was very cool from them so you're saying that you do actually notice a difference between how the landlords there uh, have have been communicating and uh, the kind of leeway and and grace that they've given as compared to our landlords here uh honestly there is a major big difference and i'm glad uh you know i'm in a organization called sg tough where we actually help tenants and people who are in need of such advices gain help and seek redress and we represent i think maybe more than 3000 over individual tenants where the management group works with the ministry of law to introduce certain measures and the measures that you've seen are mostly needed by this group of them and they're working day in day out to make sure every tenant here feels safe and secure about what they do I thought that was a very big initiative that they pushed on with us and I kind of like joined and I was helping out with the videos on social media so but they do all the work so I kudos to them. And you also have a store in KL what's the situation been like over there? It's currently on lockdown and they even extended the lockdown to you I think uh, mid of June so we're just playing by year waiting for more advice so it's been a waiting game so far even for singapore too yeah how badly has business been affected because you know with with uh, at least four brick and mortar stores that you have uh around the world singapore and malaysia and the us um now with all the lockdowns you do have your online platform still in place but you know how how has business uh, taken a hit oh when it first came about sometime in uh, mid-february so business dropped at least 60 to 70 percent there was a huge drop and with the online model right now i think we kind of uh, revived it and we started um, introducing products that are related to the covid 19 virus and that has helped the company in a really large aspect in terms of cash flow and even maintaining um, the salaries of our staff none of them have gone on a no pay leave so that is something all founders are really proud of mm. something that we want to try because we believe in a concept that works in the long run and I need the team to be motivated, which they are. They're working harder as ever and never been so hard before on them, but they are extremely strong and motivated. And tell us about the designers that you work with to produce these uh, interesting products for We The People. Are they mostly local? Uh, they're mostly overseas, international actually, because uh, Kickstarter is not a platform that most locals will use. I would say it's slowly growing with our presence because People realize that they don't have to rely on much fixed cost to start a product or to start the brand. They use crowdfunding and with Kickstarter or platforms like Indiegogo, you receive funding or pre-orders as what it usually is called online, where you have international orders coming from all around the world. Before you go to the factory to manufacture what you need and then you send out to people. So that's no fixed cost where people are happy to try and if it doesn't work, it's okay because it means that they have to improve on the product but if it does move you get lots of awareness and pre-orders other than just starting you know in a traditional way like how i started talking to those when i first started right well it's good to know that both uh, those businesses talking to us as well as we the people are continuing their operations online in terms of uh, retail sales uh, but you know you're you're definitely not one to just sit idly by and wait for the lockdown and circuit breaker measures to to ease you're in fact uh, living up to your motto on instagram which reads i don't do ordinary ordinary doesn't appeal <laughs> yeah, um, yeah what, is that, so that's original quote right 
Yes, it was. Uh, I never believe in going by the mainstream. Mm. I mean, I respect rules. I think rules are there for a reason where there should be structure. But at the same time, you know, just go wild about ideas. Just go wild about how you feel. Something like Elon Musk, that's why I kind of model after him. <laughs> but uh, I believe craziness takes you somewhere and from there we will have a solution, always. Yeah, and I hear that you are presently, you know, killing it by selling and killing time as well, by selling fruits and vegetables at a neighbourhood supermarket. So so this is where I, I have a lot of questions about like, uh, you have two businesses, they're running online, uh, but yet you are finding time to... Do I call this moonlight or maybe daylight? I have no idea. Uh, working at a neighborhood supermarket. How did this happen and what gave you the idea to want to do this? I'll be very honest. The reason why I started uh, working at New Star Supermarket was purely because uh, when we when I came back from the States, you know, the team was very uncertain when we had a meeting on the pay card. You know, it's not something that I would love to say, but at the same time, I wanted to be really stick to my guys that hey you know what this is happening across the board just be aware that if we have to do this we might have to and of course the morale wasn't high you know everyone was working hard in a startup environment but at the same time um, you know I needed to do something so in a short term measure I saw the notice where they needed work and it's just five minutes away and I calculated that you know what if we introduce a pay cut and if I work X amount of hours and days I could still have the guys on payroll without having them to suffer a pay cut. That was the main reason why I wanted to work there. But how much but, could, uh, I'm sorry, but how much could you yeah. possibly earn at a working at a supermarket and use that to offset the salary of your workers? I think it's uh, currently we have about, yeah, we have about six of us that are on a full-time payroll. And uh, if we introduce uh, like a 20% pay cut, that's enough for me to cover that. In fact, just slightly more. And for me, I have a really high tolerance level. So I'm like working eight hours there. And then I go back, I work on Vita People, I work on Talking to those. We're even launching a Kickstarter campaign sometime in October. And I think uh, I just have, you know, I, I can't stay at home. You know, I go mad. It's really boring. <laughs> and this represents an opportunity for me, not just to have the cash flow in ready, it also gives me the chance to go out because I'm going mad and keeps me fresh at the same time. I'm doing way more than I could do previously. So I, I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm loving the experience so far. Yeah, which is a very radical experience from all the work that you have done prior to, uh, you know, uh, ending up at the supermarket here with uh, you dealing with fruits and vegetables rather than gadgets and gizmos. Very different. Um, what are you learning about yourself, you know, as, as you work in this very unusual, uh, not your regular office environment, if you like, dealing with fresh fruits and vegetables? I suppose you can even start recommending us how to go about picking our fruits and vegetables. Yeah, I was I was having a lot of fun. So uh, I, I'm not a, you know, I don't go to the market very often with my parents. I used to when I was young, but you know, with time. Mm. So I was learning about, oh, you know, how to choose a pineapple, how to choose a watermelon. So I researched on Google. I was speaking to the aunties there. You know, how should I do this? How should I recommend? And I did lots of Instagram stories on recommending. <laughs> like point one, choose a color that's, you know, not green. Point two, this and that. And it went on and my friends were like, Hey, dude, can you show us about this fruit? Can you show us about this vegetable? So it became very viral. <laughs> Even a new staff management came by and like, so who's this guy who's been doing all the videos, you know? <laughs> it was very epic. Very epic. Amazing. I think you, you found a lot of friends among your aunties as well, huh? <laughs> and they were pretty nice. They were like, Chelsea, why are you working here? You know, is this a part-time job? Or are you having fun? Or why? So I was like, oh, you know, I'm just trying to kill time. I'm too bored at home, stuff like that. But I think it's uh, for me as personally as, as someone, I, no matter the type of job or no matter where you put me in, with the same kind of uh, mental resilience and a strong positive character, I don't think anything's like um, not worth doing. You know, I could still try and do my best in every single aspect, be it a different industry, and I will still get it done just because I just want to do my best I give 200% and that's clean from me. So is there anything that you've learned uh, from your supermarket experience that you can apply to your other businesses or maybe even vice versa? Uh, they're very detailed in how, uh, you know, um, they, like the selection of fruits and the logistic aspect of things because 
um, they're very experienced, you know. So they have a system in place whereby as we the people, sometimes uh, we just want to do things for convenience. And I'll be really upfront that sometimes we forget certain aspects of, um, you know, standard operating procedures. And that's what I really learned. And my manager has been very nice to go through everything with me one by one. The staff there has been great since day one to guide me. So I think in terms of me getting more structural in operations just made me or just opened up my eyes so much. Yeah, I think that, you know it's it's so um, uh, so much to to be to be proud of to you know have if I were to be working in your company to know that my boss is doing this just to keep me going and my pay cut and and you know preventing further um, uh, if, if impact on me because of COVID nineteen. I think it's kudos to you for doing what you do. Nothing below, nothing below you really that you know you you say oh, I can't do this because it's below my pay grade or whatever. Um, and I think that's that's really a lesson in itself uh, about resilience and about, I guess, being a leader. Yeah, I just do my best. I think that, that kind of uh, sums the whole experience up. I don't really bother about, you know, I earn seven, eight bucks an hour. Mm. I just do what I needed to do in this period. And I think that kind of, uh, you know, people take a chance on people. You take a chance on experience. It's just like, uh, like you know, I just quote an example. With the UV sterilizers that we're selling, um, Metro department store kind of took a chance with us as well. You know, us being a no, like a small startup, and then okay, you know what? I saw this, and they helped us by promoting it all over the newspaper for us. Mm. So, being a large company, having look at us, they're like, okay, you know what? Let's take a chance, and they've been very supportive of what we do. They're very new school kind of people, so I guess it helps so much when we're dealing in this environment. Well, do you think you're likely to get a promotion at the supermarket? I mean, you mentioned that the bosses <laughs> were keen on your vid your Instagram videos of the fruit. Uh, I don't really expect much, to be honest, because uh, I'm just doing doing this uh, just uh, during the circuit breaker period. But I'll be more than glad to share what I've done and perhaps uh, they could do such experience because I don't see supermarkets doing a very personal kind of sharing or, you know, how to choose fruit, stuff like that. I, I thought they kind of brought a more personal touch to it, enhancing the experience of users. In every business, customers mean the most. That's the most important thing. People matter the most. And if you enhance that experience, I think we got a billing formula. Mm, wonderful, well said. Um, so, any chance that you will be diversifying your your businesses uh, to include supermarket chains as well? I actually had this idea about three years ago. I was uh -huh. telling my friend, um, it, it'll be called Veggie Boys. Veggie Boys. Yeah. So I think the whole uh, wet market uh, situation has been, you know, um, people don't want to explore today, but. In recent times, we're seeing lots of young people becoming hawkers, um, you know, having the passion for food, passion for this. But with supermarkets or, you know, small shops selling such products, it could be something that could spark a whole new trend of us enhancing the whole wet market scene. People go to NTUC, you go to cold storage, no problem with that. But having a new fresh guy come in and create a concept that's worth doing in a wet market, I think that could be an idea. Mm, and if you're going in, you're no more green anymore because you are yeah. <laughs> cutting your teeth now in that kind of environment. Uh, Nissan, thank you so much for speaking with us. It's been really quite eye-opening to know what you have gone through, know what you are currently doing, um, and how this can be so inspiring for many, you know, business leaders, startup founders as well, um, and also that yeah, there is hope. You know, there is there is uh, that strategy of outliving COVID nineteen. Uh, let's point our listeners to your websites as well for your two business. Businesses. One would be We the People, and that website address is wtpstore.co. And for Talking Toes, it's talkingtoessocks.com. Did I get yeah. that right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. It's yeah. one and which supermarket are you at? Let's give them a plug as well. They've been so nice. Oh, I'm at U Star Supermarket. They have 30 over outlets all over Singapore. So I'm currently at the one in Jurong West. Okay, go Jurong West and look for Nissan <laughs> Chan. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Nissan. You have a great day. And uh, yeah, we thank look you. forward to hearing more updates about We The People in coming days as well. And all the best for that store once it reopens in uh, Silicon Valley. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, take care.